Cheering, cheering is so fun. It's basically the dream job to everyone. The ultimate life that girls desire, do whatever it takes for them to acquire. Starve yourself and have tan skin, lose confidence and soul within. Self-dignity is out the door. Now you're the girl America adores. <sighs> I don't know why I'm dressed like this. I thought this would be funny, but I'm asking myself, when I look back at this video in two years, will I think that I've made a fool out of myself dressing in a cheer outfit and having pom-poms? I don't know. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a video over Victoria's Secret, which if you have not watched that video, it's on my channel, so go watch it. It's really good. But I was thinking about how Victoria's Secret was a part of this early 2000 hyper-feminine movement. And I really think cheer culture was a part of that as well. So like almost all sports, cheerleading, of course, was only a male sport at the beginning. But after the men left to fight in World War II, women soon took over and dominated the sport. Now, now cheerleading is such a huge sport and everyone knows what it is. But cheerleading has really just become this toxic, stereotypical space that's very degrading and ignorant. So I really wanted to just create a video dedicated to cheerleading and I wanted to have this discussion on of what cheerleading has really created in this world and especially in America. And if that sounds interesting to you, then just keep on watching. So growing up, I had strict parents and I was the first child. So if you know, you know. And it shouldn't come as a shock when I tell you guys I was not allowed to participate in any type of cheerleading. I was basically brought up to think that cheerleading was just about wearing skimpy clothing and makeup and doing like really inappropriate dancing. So naturally, I was drawn to it. I know in school you have your cheerleaders in the basketball games and the football games and you would also see them at like the pep rallies. And I remember when I was younger, I wanted to be a cheerleader so bad. To me, cheer was just a mix of athleticism, dancing, cute outfits, makeup, and just powerful women and girls, which sounds amazing to me. But as I got older, I realized that not everyone had the same thought process when it comes to cheering. The biggest problem when it comes to women representation in terms of sports is that people think that girl sports aren't real sports, which of course, mostly men think this, which is not a big surprise. I mean, a lot of people think because ballet isn't rough or figure skating doesn't involve knocking people over or because cheering doesn't require people shooting balls in a hoop, then that means it's not a real sport. Meanwhile, people think that sitting in a car and driving it in a circle is a real sport, which is car racing. I mean, if that's not sexist, I don't know what is. I mean, do you just not understand how much work and dedication goes into cheer alone and how dangerous cheerleading is by itself and how athletic you have to be? Yet people think steering your hand right and left is a sport. I don't know, what world are we living in? And a part of the reason why there's just such a huge stereotype when it comes to cheer is of course because of the media. I mean, I don't think I've ever made a video that doesn't talk about how social media dictates how we live our lives in society. There has obviously been so many shows and TV shows that have been about cheering, but probably one of the most popular movies would have to be Bring It On. When we think of cheer, most of us think of sparkly pom-poms, and cat fights and the chair captain dating the quarterback and i think that's you know due to movies like this i do like the movie but i think that this movie just made it worse for chair representation i mean i really haven't watched that movie in such a long time but i think it's a huge contributing factor as to why when we think of cheer our head automatically goes to those thoughts all right so now we're entering reality tv i don't know to me reality cheer shows were much more entertaining than shows like dance moms because cheer had that extreme risk factor and it seemed that there was always so much at stake. A huge show that was probably one of the most well-known cheer shows was the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders making the team. The Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders are world icons. In the cheerleading world, it doesn't get any better than this. I've known since I was like 15 years old that I wanted to do this since I started cheering in high school. Like, Same know, here. So. This show has literally been on for years and I think that they finally had their final season 
and I have been watching that show and it's so crazy because so many of those women have trained their entire life just to become a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. And the most recent show that has really become popular on Netflix is the show Cheer. The show basically showed the ups and downs of Cheer. It showed that everyone is on the team had a story, something they went through that brought them to where they are today. And it really gave you a look into what life was like navigating college, being a young adult, and what cheer was really like, their pressures and all. Cheerleading has always had this facade of being something that was fun and something you do on your free time, but there's truly an unspoken dark side of cheer that until fairly recently was never talked about. When you think about it, life after cheer isn't really prevalent. There is competitive cheering for kids in elementary school, middle school, and high school and college, but after that you either become basically a coach or you can enter the NFL cheering, which seems really great but it was actually the exact opposite. NFL cheering is one of the most unfair, sexualized, and absurd sports out there. So first of all, you have to be extremely tiny to even enter this toxic culture. There have been times where girls don't have a completely flat stomach or have a little bit of love handles and they get sent home and they get told that they're too fat. You have to perform 10 jumping jacks and that's what was called the jiggle test so they could see you know if any parts of your body were jiggling. There's a story about how there was once an NFL cheerleader and she had gained some weight and she looked like a normal human being but she was told that she was too fat and she literally had to have her body duct taped under her uniform to perform and she went out there and she performed with the duct tape all over her body and it was extremely painful for her and it was really sad. Like it literally in the rule book it says you have to be a certain fat percentage to be a part of the team and if you're not the right size they can easily get rid of you just like that and of course their outfits are overly sexualized. Booty shorts, their boobs are hanging out, a full face of makeup on and this is how you're required to look every single game. I mean if I was a cheerleader all my life and I had to enter into that culture I would be devastated. You either become a skinny legend or don't cheer at all. That's your only two options. Because outside of the NFL, there's really no competitive cheer like that. You can become a coach or a dance instructor, but that's about it. So these are the models that all these little girls are looking up to. In order to be a cheerleader, you have to be tan, dangerously thin, and have your face beaten with powder and lipstick. And they had you pay for everything. Most of the time you were required to pay for your uniform, your hair, makeup, gym membership, which is totally normal to me. I feel like that's fine and fair, but the thing about it is that these girls weren't getting paid anything. Some girls were getting paid minimum wage or like a hundred dollars a show so these cheerleaders were making less than mascots or the concession stand workers. And of course in almost every working environment for women they were sexualized. There are stories about certain members of their crowd coming down and squeezing them and tugging on them and just really treating them really unfairly. By having cheerleaders in their current form in these sexed up objects on the on the sidelines that have really no other role or no other purpose than to be ogled by, by fans. The NFL is telling women, we really don't care about you. We want your money, but you as people, you as employees, we don't really care about you. When you're an NFL cheerleader, you have to live a PG life. If not, that's the end of the line for you. They are watching every single thing that you post on social media. For instance, you're not allowed to post suggestive pictures. So no pictures of you in like your bra or any pictures of you drinking. And on the other side, football players have the right to post anything they want to without any repercussions. NFL cheerleaders cannot in any way contact the actual football players in person or on social media. Like if they even catch you glancing in their direction, you're done. While on the other side, Side, football players are allowed to talk to all the cheerleaders that they want, message them in person or on social media without getting cut or getting kicked off the team. And if I'm being really honest, most people don't even care about the cheerleaders. Half the time whenever they're performing their halftime show or whatever it may be, there's players running across the field, kicking balls. The staff would, you know, walk across and not really give a care about them. They would cut out their performance on the Jumbotron and replace it 
with the football players playing. These girls were just seen as a uniform and that's all. They were told a million girls want your spot so you can easily be replaced. This is the world of an NFL cheerleader. Every day is a new struggle when it comes to your sexual exploitation. Yet there are thousands of girls who dream of one day becoming an NFL cheerleader. I mean, there have been multiple women that have spoken up about how they were treated during their time as a cheerleader and filed many lawsuits, but it still continues to this day. So the combination of the media, body standards, and sexual stereotypes types is what really gives cheerleaders a bad reputation. And although cheer has come a long way in terms of evolution, we're still nowhere where we need to be when it comes to the respect and admiration that cheerleaders deserve. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and I upload every single week. So I will be back next week for my next video. Bye guys. Thank you.